Good Wednesday evening, everybody, and welcome back. Slay the Spire with the Watcher. Ascension, I was going to say six, it's five. I won the last round I did in stylistic fashion, we want to say. If by stylistic you mean like, you know, RNGing into two Ragnaroks, some multi strikes on top of it, and I think I had a double damage or like a divine entity piece in that deck that let me just womp the boss in like two hits. Yeah, what am I saying about that? Was that all luck? Nah, dude, all skill. All skill every day, just like Slay the Spire's always been, especially on Ascension mode. I missed yesterday's uh, recording session. I had a lot of things that actually came up. Uh, I actually wanted to play Slay the Spire, but like the number of things that piled on on top of like after work errands, just too much. Even at this time right now, it's like 7 p.m. and I'm not even streaming on Wednesday. To be fair, I haven't been doing a lot of like anything. <laughs> I did a Monday stream and I did stream WoW and then I quickly learned that I'm never going to do that again because as much as I enjoy playing that on my own time, if you're ever going to do something to talk or play a game to talk over if you're ever doing a stream of some sort, not the game to do it for. It's like pretty redundant. It's like, oh, I can crack a joke that I'm collecting 15 bear asses and that's that. With Slay the Spire, I can crack jokes at my own expense <laughs> and slay it. All right, let's go. Random rare card, three potions, chain of curse, choose a random rare card or rare card, no random. Who's your starting relic? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Give me a random rare card. <laughs> yes. And that's part of the joy of Slay the Spire, because you got things like that that can happen, and if your juices are flowing and you got some good bits in your head, you can ramble on about something that has no actual purpose. I mean, I'd like to give you guys some juicy stories of, like, some juicy bits that I've got going on in my life. To be honest, it is bringing a lot of, like, political stuff and, like, you know, fires in California, i.e. it's called the news. That's not gaming news. So I got nothing juicy to say. However, BlizzCon is in like a day and a half at this point. Guaranteed there's going to be some spice that comes out of that. Both given like a political issue that's always been going on with the Blizzard and the announcements that are going to come with whatever games they push forth. Diablo 4 is expected, probably a new WoW expansion. I'm not really like the biggest WoW or Blizzard person, even though that's what I've been doing lately. It's just like, eh, ah, it's one of those big things that come up every year. As we talk about this, I am still trying to find the path that I want to take, but overall, these paths are pretty shit. I'm thinking the right path might be the best one here. We gotta take on an elite early, but we get a guaranteed four fireplace path, two elites. With Ragnarok, we, ha we have nothing to fear. I don't know why I'm overthinking it. Here's what you do. You erupt, you Ragnarok, you win. It's just that easy. In this case, we just throw everything at the wall and we win. And Ragnarok costs three, so if there's turns where these enemies have some downtime, that's an easy 50 damage flying at them. Hmm, and I do like protection in the deck as well. There's a lot of cards that make it even better. I will not lose my Ragnarok. You're out of your goddamn mind. Take my money. Marbles? Oh, baby. There's an opener here. There's the Eruption. There's the, what's the opener? The opener would be Eruption with Vigilance and then Ragnarok sitting on the side. Eruption needs to be upgraded, of course. We've got some options, though. Also, Marbles on an opening hand like that. Marbles on this character in general gives you <laughs> infinite potential. I would... I would like to do damage here, but one, I can too. We can just roll it over and then let Ragnarok kill this guy's ass. Kick this guy's ass, man. You wouldn't believe that I'm good at my customer service job with the amount of like slurring of words that I have. And to be fair, that's not my issue when I'm doing that job. It's more so that I talk way too fast and people are like, Hey, slow the fuck down. I'm like, you know what? That's honest feedback. Except for this one guy that I was trying to call that legitimately just hung up twice. He's like, all right, motherfucker. I don't give a shit. You don't care what I have to say? I don't- Oh, care what you have to say. And what do I have to do there? Well, you know, the call was something that I can't disclose because then it gets into the nature of my business. But, like, if you just blatantly hung up, hang up the phone... There's this a trick to, like, you know, doing customer service work to not uh, kill yourself. And that is to not take it personally. And I definitely fail in some aspects of that. Not that I, like, I blow up on anyone in particular, but I just get, like, actually cheese where I'm like, Listen, motherfucker, I don't give two hoots who you are. You show me some goddamn respect. Uh, um, but even then, like, when people treat me like shit, like, uh, on a customer service job, it's like, eh, it, it comes with, like, the territory, more or less. Like, you knew what you signed up for, even though it's like, you know, I didn't sign up for this. But, like, the sound of someone, like, clanking the phone down on me is like, who the fuck do you think you are? That's some, like, massive disrespect. I don't care if you're fucking Steve Jobs' cousin. Give me some time of day. Do you want, do you want to hear what I have to say? Do you even care? Okay, well, you get cheesed in like a week. Don't don't at me, don't at me. No, it, it sounds crazy because like as a millennial, it's like, do you even pick up the phone? No, and that's not because I have like some sort of severe anxiety of picking up the phone. It's mostly because like 
90% of the phone calls I would get at this age, they're not calls that are, like, of any value to me. It's literally gonna be my captain calling, let me know my cruise is ready, or, you know, S Steven from the department of the IRS letting me know my social's been hacked and that I better send him a $20 Best Buy gift card, or they're gonna have to, you know, issue a warrant for my arrest. And I'm like, ah, dude. I, I, I'm sorry, there's no Best Buys in driving distance. I guess I'm going to jail. Usually it's not Best Buy, though. It tends to be like an Amazon gift card for whatever reason. I guess. I mean, Amazon has their foot in everything, but, like, come on. Best Buy? Let's go to Future Shop. <laughs> That's a Canadian reference. I only know about this. I only know about Future Shop's existence. Not because of, like, some streamer, but from, like, my younger years when I did play a lot of WoW back in the day. My guild leader was a stoner Canadian. He gave me the full-on scope of what it means to be work at Future Shop and get high as hell in, like, the year 2010. Which, for the time, was pretty controversial, at least for, like, my young age, as well as, like, you know, even the mention of weed in, like, the community would get you put into the slammer. It's crazy how times have progressed. Hey, uh, this fight's going bad. I've been rambling on for a minute, and it's a good cover-up to realize, like, I'm getting some pretty shit draws. I'm not drawing, like, the conjunction of Eruption with Ragnarok at all. We're paying the iron price for it. I'm going to hold on to this here. We can make something pop here. One good eruption with Ragnarok is all we need to turn this fight around. Okay, we can also just do Ragnarok raw. I think I have to. It's the best chance to, you know, save some damage. And it sucks. Everything about this current run is fucking garbage. So even if we get eruption now, it's not really helping us out. We're getting completely plinked down. Like, please. Fucking free me from this goddamn curse. Yes, thank you. I, I appreciate the eruption here. Can I get a kill? Nine. That becomes 12, so we're at 21. 21 gets an additional 16. That is enough to get the kill. We take those around here. No, just give me Ragnarok, all right? What are my odds? It's essentially like a one in four. So, they're not great odds. Oh, fucking blessed be. Get me out of here. These fucking fights have been gone horrible. Meal ticket. I love it. If there's any shops on this path, we are scooping them up right now. Inner peace. Drawing some extra cards. Might be nice. Entering calm. Also nice. We'll take it. We, we need a lot of pieces for this deck to start to revving up its engine. I need to rest twice, because if I'm taking on that extra elite for the fireplace, we need the HP. And if this was a shop, that'd be great. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay. So we go Vigilance, Miracle, Eruption. <laughs> Was I expecting to play Ragnarok there? Yes, but, uh, bad math. So, you know that last one I did that was, like, just flawless beyond belief? Yeah, nah, it's, it's not happening here, and I think he's the one that webs me, so I better enter my Calm Stance. <laughs> you know, the easy joke there is, like, Tim, your tone of voice doesn't sound like a Calm Stance at all. Yeah, I know! I have a good deck here, but, like, the run's kind of fucking me over. I need a little bit of the, the game to work with me here, so I can get some cards on the table. It's just not happening. Okay, Crescendo is another means to do that. And Akabeko. Okay, please. Game, throw me some luck here. We need some good draws. Akabeko with Ragnarok. Even on an opener. That's something I will do. That's way too much damage to not just throw it as an opener. I'll do it. I'll do it. So we're resting up. Block Potion ready. Vomit on a swear spaghetti. Sweater already, Mom's spaghetti. Okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, we don't get to apply the vulnerable here. That's fine. Roll it over. So what you do here is you Vigilance. You let Crescendo stick around, because that's fine, all right? And then on this one, you absolutely go for it. So you Crescendo, and then you Ragnarok. Easy. Easiest lead of my goddamn life. I didn't need to rest at all, apparently. Duality, whenever you play an attack, you gain one temporary dexterity. It's just nice. Not the greatest, but it's pretty alright. Conclude is great AoE. I don't really need it against the upcoming boss fight. Um, but it will help against a lot of the other trash. And it's, you know, it, it's on value, or on par with value as far as, like, what the mana cost is for. It's not like Consecrate, which actually just actually fucks you over anytime you draw it. Especially, like, second floor after. Let's get Eruption to cost one as well, and then, of course, we'll get the Crescendo on the table, or... Maybe we should... No, you should get Ragnarok on the table, that's your damage source. Alright. Dude, you better hope I don't draw it. Oh, you're lucky, mister. 
So we can get a kill outright. Let's do it. Flex potion, you better hope I don't draw it, dude. So yeah, consecrate. Never look at it again. Give it a glance. Say no thank you, sir. Grab evaluate instead. Why evaluate? A little extra block is nice in the current lineup. And the draw, what is it, three cards for two? Or two cards for zero, I should say. Very good. Okay, Ragnarok up and running. Hagabeko combo ready. We could one-shot this guy with a good flex potion draw. I still think we go for this. Like, this is decent damage right now. It's it's really decent damage. I, I feel no remorse. I'm still going to plop this down when we draw. You know what? And unfortunately, we did not. So let's go for inner peace into a big block. Not going to expend the potion, though. So this, this has the damage, more or less. Pretty good. Okay, when halves use me, um... Yes! Like a hundred percent yes, I will do that time and time again. Yeah, hit me for 12. You're down to 17 HP. That is the key to this character that I found works every time. It's the skeleton key for this character. Ragnarok, Wrath Form, some sort of damage amplification on it, so you have the Flame Wreath, you also have Akabeko, it's all good. Ambrosia, enter Divinity Stance. Wonderful. So I can either take out the elite, an elite on the floor, or I can win one, one uh, elite fight, elite boss. You know, you know what I mean here, interchangeably. That potion guarantees me guarantees me success. Lesson learned. Now that it has some card art, very cool. If fatal, oh, okay, fatal is a new keyword. Cool. Vault. Oh, Omni Science. Oh, Omni Science. These are both very good. Um, oh, I can't play this unless I get an energy relic here. So I'm gonna take Vault just because it is like a it's a stall tactic. If we don't draw a Ragnarok when we like it, or we don't draw it at all, we can use that to get a free turn. And I don't think it exhausts itself. It absolutely exhausts itself. So other relics we're looking to add to this deck. Spoon, hundred <laughs> percent. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. So Snickle's Eye is a very interesting value proposition as well. We can get Ragnarok for free on some turns. And we're drawing extra cards so we get to it quicker. That's tempting. Bad draws mean we just lose. We can also go for Ectoplasm, which is consistent. It's gonna get us some better average turns, and then we can squeeze out something extra with Ragnarok. I'm gonna go for the consistency here. Because we don't really have a lot of expensive cards at that time that we can use. Why don't we heal to full? Alright, yeah, we're at that point. Okay. Triple fireplace, one elite in the way, or quad fireplace, one elite very late down the line. We can make that decision at the crossroad here in a second. Easy turn, Vigilance. Smackaruski. I know I'm burning Akabeko for this. So actually, no, yeah. I'm not going to burn Akabeko for this. There's zero reason to do that. Mm. Okay, I'll burn it here. After we do this. So yeah, like I said, I'll burn it here. So then I started blasting. Okay, I could have squeezed out the extra attack there. That one's on me. Um, also, I don't know where this So Then I Started Blasted meme came from, but, uh, it's pretty good. Like, the context you can use that in is endless and if not infinite. I love it. I don't know what origin it came from. I don't know what streamer said it. I've heard, like, a billion people say it. It's pretty good. And that's what we're gonna name the, this video. No, we're not. Maybe. Uh, like, water, we don't need it. Bowling Bash, we don't need it. We have, we have what we need right now. Meal ticket gets me to full. Thank you. Uh, Dead Branch, no. Pressure Points is going through, like, so many different art changes. I don't know what they want at this, this point. Oh, yeah, and, and I like the art that sort of suggests, even though I could, like, read Reddit, maybe. Um, but suggests what fights would be good in. So against the multiple cultist fight, yeah, Pressure Point would be outstanding. I'm actually going to take Trip, because that amplifies the current deck we have. And I'm going to thin out another Basic Strike, because if we can keep this thin and draw the things we only need, we can all be in love. Second Wrath, nothing wrong with that either. Hold up. Wait a minute. Fantastic. Cost me a potion, but that does get us out of here quickly. I could have held out a turn, but you, you never know how long those are going to go on for. And we only lost the... Oh, wait. We have no gold to really lose. So overall, it was a good play. I'm tempted to grab Sash Whip 
if we didn't have Ragnarok, that'd definitely be the case. Um, hmm. Take my gold. I don't really care if I get the mask or not, because it won't help me down the line anyway. I can just get the mask on the third floor, and it's going to be just fine at that point as well. There we go. Upgraded treasure room. So now, question marks are something to consider. We only got potentially two to three. First things first, pop in here. Trip to everyone. Maybe vault one less. I like it. Conclude rank up. Also good. Crescendo being free. Yes. Absolutely yes. I would like these extra fireplaces. Let's do it. So, continue to amp up him. You go for a Protect Plus, a Miracle into Ragnarok. Just some of the best gaming I've ever done in my life. Some of the luckiest game I've ever done in my life. The run's going great. In case you were asking, yes, things are great. Wheel Kick... ...does have a place. It can work as an energy engine to get to certain cars faster, and if we get some more... Miracles, that'd be great. It's it's just risky, because if, if it doesn't work out, it's going to be a very dead draw. I think we'll say... We're going to grab it, actually. I, th there's more than likely going to be a case where I can make that work. So, yes. Thank you. Welcome aboard Wheel Kick. I feel like if the upgrade made it draw three cards, it would be broken, but that's what I would prefer over five extra damage. Ice Cream. All right. Deck may have just uh, solved itself here. So, let's get uh, Vault to be cheaper now. So, turns we don't need to spend energy. Self-explanatory, don't spend the energy. You'll profit. Why do this? There's a lot of reasons. Sure, we'll take seven damage right now. But we can instantly ice this guy on a good draw. And that would be the good draw. So you go Crescendo, Ragnarok, we're out of there. The price we paid was right. Foresight Plus lets me get to a specific card quickly. Yeah, that sounds right. All right. We're taking one damage, but this is fine. Don't get to use the vulnerability. Also fine. You could take a turn off and that'd be swell. Hey, I think we just won. I almost botched that because I forgot I have Akabeko. Thank God that didn't happen in that order. Fear Potion means we might not need to burn Divinity Stance because I would like to burn that on this guy. Yeah, and Meditate's also good because then you can fish back out the Ragnarok. Okay. Curse Tome. Oh my God. There is one in particular. I'm greeting. He's done it. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. We've got options. I know I just I just wasted Akimeko. It's it's damage right now, alright? Um Foresight, evaluate. Just vault it. I know I'm not saving any energy. I don't want you or you. Those are gonna be fine. Insight. Mm. Yeah, we can't safely do what we want to do. Also, order would have helped out a little bit here. Okay, it's fine. Two crescendos held on. It came last in the pecking order, but that's still fine. So go ahead and get rid of that. And that. We need better damage options. We needed better damage options, but this should be enough. Because we have the Necronomicon, so yeah, it's more than enough. Tori's huge, block potion's huge. Whenever you block, apply one weakness to all enemies. That's actually pretty nice as well. I'll squeeze it in there. All right, we got recipe for success here. Thin out the deck, and then I think we have everything we need for victory. So against you, I was going to say, yeah, there's a very particular, a particular set of cards I would like to get. And uh, this would absolutely be the turn to do it. 
He's dead. That was actually overkill because I had Necronomicon. That one's on me, but... It's fine. Get out of there. He's dead. Draw cards until your hand is full. Also good for what we're doing. Double the effectiveness of potions. Yeah, that's... That's actually perfect. What the hell? It's only been 20 minutes. We're moving way too fast, and I love it. This is a free heal. I don't care if it doesn't really give me any benefit. It's a free heal. Meal ticket. Ticket to eat, ticket to ride, don't matter. We're going in. You go Vigilance, you go Eruption. Give him the wheel kick. Oh, he's dead, because that also gets played twice. Ha ha. Uh, no to all of that. Pressure point plus. Love ya. Take a look in here. Cool. I love it, I don't need it, so I just wanted to make sure it knew that. Two more question mark rooms. Guess there's a guaranteed Chesticus. I was say, I can crescendo. Why waste it? Why risk the carbs? All right, looking a little grimmer here. Still fine, still perfectly fine. That's going to hurt. Got confidence we can get out of this. All right. We'll kick him because that'll get him killed regardless. Crescendo, so you can draw two more cards. So you can play Foresight, so you can block, so you can Vigilance, so you can Crescendo again, so you can Scrawl, and then you can play your Miracle to play Ragnarok. I'm fine with that, because we will have the healing potential on another turn or two. So now we just need to draw some blockage, and we've drawn exactly what I need. And that's a George in the book. Alright. Another evaluate is actually fine. Question mark gets us the Wheel of Change. I'm perfectly fine with some healing here. Relic would be nice, just nothing negative. Clearly you're not listening, my dear. 7 HP. Forget about it. Happy Flower, that's another piece on the energy engine. Let's go. Here. Anything you'd like to do? Yeah, you being free is pretty good. Could have healed. Don't worry, there's a shop right there. Or a resting station right there. Not worried. It sounds like I'm worried. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, you're worried. We're burning a lot to make it happen, but it is absolutely worth it. Cool. That that makes life incredibly easy, you have no idea. Um, can we get a kill? Six? Twenty-four? No, we cannot. We will slow roll it. Also, I did that in the wrong order again. Uh, thanks to Tori, we're not being punished too hard, but I am definitely biffing it up a bit here. So crescendo has to happen, evaluate has to happen. Doubling up there. Give me a vault so we get another free turn. And then we give him the wheel kick. Real good. Energy potion, yes. Another crescendo. That might be too many. I think that is falling under the category of too many. Deceive reality, it's a good block card. Alright. Let's get back up to full here because we don't know what's going to happen. And there's another guaranteed heal there, so we can get two more pieces here. Ancient tea set. While it seems very minor, that's two more energy going into Time Lord, who we are absolutely going to destroy. Oh, you gotta. You just, you just gotta. I'm terrified, but this is actually a kill. So, nothing to be scared about. Bottle Miracle, alright. Game wants me to win. Hell yeah, brother. You're gonna be a problem. I already know that, so Ragnarok... Is this actually going to be a kill? Oh, I wonder what card he's going to pull back. Yoink. Ragnarok again. Yes.
And I'm actually gonna scroll so I can get to my Ragnarok a turn quicker once more. And to throw some more of these wonderful blocks on the table. Yes, we're happy with that. So what you do here is you go for a strike. And evaluate. Flying Sleeves, 24 damage. Can we get enough block here? I don't think I can, so actually let's do a Vault. Does that count towards your burn? Doesn't look like that's the case at all. We'll draw some cards. Inner Peace actually comes at a very crucial time in my life. Cool. So I would actually very much like to enter this stance. And we'll reserve some energy. It's all about not botching it right now. Uh, 70 damage blocked? We can do that, actually. We can do that. So we don't need these two. We don't need those two at all. Ooh, don't need it, period, I guess. So we'll do it like this just to apply weakness. The weakness will help out on this upcoming turn, so this is fine. Because 120 is doable. Not with that hand, it's not. Oh, fuck. Not with that hand, it's not. Give Ragnarok, please. So you hit him for 18, obviously. Drop an insight. All right, so now we need to defend ourselves as best we can. Timmy with an inner peace. See reality. Crescendo. Block, block, meditate. And we've hit a, a reasonable threshold, but that was way scarier than it had any right to be. Uh, all right, out of there. Thank you, meal ticket, because that was a rough one. Dude, I would love the extra vault. You don't even know. And that's two upgrades for us. So, you upgrade you, or you upgrade you? You upgrade you. Retain and calm. Excellent. Retaining two cards, even better. Lose zero gold for the mask. What did I say? What did I fucking say? That's exactly how it was going to go out. I knew this. Going into it, I had that confidence ready. This is also good. Maybe seeing the wheel kick? Don't worry about it. The wheel kick's still gonna be there. He ain't going nowhere. Things you don't do here. You don't erupt. We do tack on some damage, though. Other things you do, you get yourself some extra energy for free. Like, there's no reason not to do this. So toss that for obvious reasons, and hold on to the rest. So this you go for wave of the hand, evaluate, deceive reality, and then vault. And straight up, put those on the back burner, we know what we want. And we got it. Hit him with the crescendo. The Ragnarok. The Vigilance, the Meditate. Oh, I think I'll grab, uh, oh, I don't know. I think I'll grab um, Ragnarok and perhaps uh, Flying Sleeves. And I've won, because I'm the greatest. And uh, anyone who's ever doubted my capabilities as a gamer, you know, door's right over there. Did I actually not win? <laughs> I'm fucking dumb. That's <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so fucking stupid. Oh my Jesus Christ, hubris. Uh, no, actually, those are those are fine cards. Actually, those are those are great cards, in fact. Um, so yeah, we'll do Crescendo, and then we'll do Ragnarok.
like, no, no. You know, some some of the lessons in life are, you know, you got to learn the, the extremely hard way. Some people, you know, you, you lose a job and like you, you risk unemployment and, you know, potential homelessness. I've been there before. I, I get it. I get it. And, oh, hey, maybe you had a relationship and it didn't work out. And it's like a hard lesson to learn there, right? Uh, pride. Pride's a very, uh, is, is there a lesson? Is there like a, a lesson I can Google here? Lessons to be learned about pride. The Google search is not giving me anything that's relevant to my, my current situation. So we're just going to click on the five most important lessons to learn from pride and likely prejudice. Yep. All right, sure. And then we'll... So yeah, sorry. I just need to... First impressions don't make the man or the woman. Okay, no, that, that doesn't apply. Sharp wit and a pair of fine eyes are worth far more than an expensive dress. Interesting. Okay, potentially relatable. You might... Obstinate, headstrong girl might be the best compliment you'll ever receive. Thank you. Thank you. I, I need that right now. When it comes to a man's library, size matters. Cool. Cool. And a grand love story is timeless. So yeah, Pride and Prejudice didn't help me out all, at all here. Like, not even close. So uh, 28 lessons to learn from Pride. And, okay, no. Clearly, Pride and Prejudice is not what I'm looking for. Pride and Prejudice. I'm just looking for lessons to learn about being prideful. You type in the word Pride, all you get is Pride and Prejudice. I get it. It's a very popular piece of media. How to swallow your pride. Apologize with humility. I've done that my entire life. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Sorry about this one. Trust me, if you're mad, you're, you're no, you're not mad. I'm mad. You think you can match the seething disappointment? Not even, it's not anger, but it's like, this is... We'll put this up there of one of the worst days of my life. In hindsight, is this like, you know, a lesson of just slowing down? Yes. Also, is this actually one of the worst days of my life? Not really. We're just sort of amping up the bit here, but I am extremely disappointed because uh, uh, it's not often the game's going to hand you a win on the silver platter there, and then you just say, no thanks, I think I'll go to Burger King. I mean, at Burger King tonight. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.